Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back with another freaking video, man. Hey. Yeah. Hey. So we got another Tom, another Thomas Soul. Let's and, go. And this is what they don't teach you don't. about colonization. Don't teach you. Let's this man see. is so educated, bro. I mean, I'm sorry. He got everyone you listen to him, man. He he point. He got facts popping, facts popping, facts popping. Let's go. Those peeping toms come in uninvited, force their way into your homes. Yep, through your computer. Somehow they find an open door, back door way in, and bam. Next thing you know, bank passcodes don't work anymore, phone is locked, email passwords have been changed. You are in a frantic panic state. The worst is going through your mind, and it's happened. I didn't eat that. The fastest growing crime in America, and every 14 seconds there's a new victim. The question is, will the next victim be you? I'm proud to be in partner with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, a VPN, password management, and antivirus software all combined into one easy to use app. A win-win. You can beat those digital peeping toms quick and right away with Aura. Protect your family and yourself from identity theft with Aura. Join the 14 day free trial at www.aura.com forward slash SIBO and SNAPA. Soul is one of the greatest philosophers of our time, yet he isn't even mentioned among the 100 most influential African Americans in Ebony magazine. Hmm. To help more people learn about him, please consider liking this video and subscribing. To get useful materials about Dr. Thomas Soul, please visit the website. Thank you and let's begin. Well, you link wealth creation to uh, the acquisition of skills and the employment of skills in a, in a disciplined way and also uh, in a uh, in a frugal way in, in terms of, of of lifestyles but others would would attribute uh, the generation of poverty the obverse of wealth to uh, colonialism imperialism exploitation uh, yes. uh, economic exploitation how, how do you handle handle those arguments well insofar as those arguments are meant seriously you can simply look at evidence uh, insofar as they're purely political arguments they're saying what people want to hear Obviously, there are people who would much rather hear that than to hear the other, because if you think that's the problem, then there's not, there's not only a, a quicker solution, uh, but there's a more, more emotionally and morally satisfying solution, uh, namely you fight against the exploiters and so on. If you look at the third world, for example, those parts of the third world where the uh, imperialist powers have come in have typically been the more advanced parts of it. They've been the most post prosperous ones. Even if they weren't prosperous before they got there, they became the more prosperous parts. Those parts of the third world that the imperialists have never touched are, almost without exception, the very poorest places on this earth. So you don't find any, exploit, uh, any explanation for poverty and colonialism? Uh, the reverse, perhaps? Oh, absolutely. That when, when the Romans, for example, invaded uh, the British Isles, they conquered uh, the southern part of uh, Britain but they never conquered Scotland. Uh, and for centuries thereafter, perhaps for a thousand years thereafter, Scotland was far behind England in economic and cultural development because England had the advantage of tying into the whole Roman civilization and everything that it had created to some extent percolated down through the British. Uh, that doesn't mean the British were happy with the Romans being there. You know, a thousand years later, Churchill could say, we owe London to Rome, but that's a thousand years later, and Churchill didn't have to go through what those people went through. So I'm not saying this is good for the people who were there, but in the, but in the longer run, of course, England became what it was because the Romans came. And Scotland finally developed only after England conquered Scotland, and then the culture and then developing in England then could spread into, into Scotland as well. Well, wow. does this suggest then that in addressing poverty in today's world there ought to be a latter-day reincarnation of imperialism or colonialism in some form? No, uh, because I think politically it's impossible. Uh, they're, they're, I, I hear from the perverse parts of uh, some independent nations, they say that they, they, they were better off under colonialism and so on. That, is, that isn't in the cause. Uh, the, the people who are in the imperialist nations don't want to take on that. But some would say that there is the functional equivalent of that in the operation of the multinational corporation today. Do you see that, uh, the operation of the multinational corporation, as help or hindrance to uh, the generation of wealth in developing countries? Well, in those countries, the multinational corporations uh, very often uh, 
not only pay more money than the local industry pays, but it brings in skills that don't exist and creates industries that, that, that never were there before. To that extent, I think they, they are a source of a transmission of international uh, human capital. Uh, to that extent, yes. Now, this excerpt did taken from the book, Intellectuals and Race, by Dr. Thomas Sowell. In addition to the inherent geographic advantages that Western Europe has had over Eastern Europe, for example, more navigable waterways leading to the open seas, mm. with Western European rivers, and harbours not being frozen over, as often or as long in winter as rivers and harbours in Eastern Europe, due to the warming effect of the Gulf Stream on Western Europe, another major historic advantage growing out of geography is that, Western Europe was more readily accessible to invasion by Roman conquerors. Mm. Despite the ruthless slaughters in those conquests and the subsequent brutal oppressions by the Roman overlords, among the lasting advantages which the Roman conquests brought to Western Europe were Roman letters, so that Western European languages had written versions centuries before the languages of Eastern Europe did. To the enormous advantages of literacy, as such, Western Europeans had the further advantage of a far greater accumulation of written knowledge in their languages, even after the languages of Eastern Europe began to develop written versions, mm. but still had not yet caught up with the centuries-long accumulations of knowledge written in Western European languages. Literacy was not the only thing that moved from West to East in Europe. So did coins, printing presses, castles, crossbows, paved streets, and vaccinations, among other economic and social advances. But all of this took time, sometimes centuries. Moreover, people from Western Europe, Germans, Jews and others, were often a majority of the population in Eastern European cities in earlier centuries, while Slavs remained a huge majority in the surrounding countryside. For example, before 1312 the official records of the city of Krakow were kept in German, and the transition, at that point, was to Latin. Only decades later did Poles become a majority of the population in Krakow. The towns of medieval East Central Europe were often cultural enclaves of foreigners, again, mostly Germans, but with many Jews as well and, in the Balkans, Greeks and Armenians, joined in later centuries by Turks. In short, there has been for centuries, not only a disparity between the opportunities and advances in the two halves of Europe, but great disparities within Eastern Europe itself, between the indigenous peoples of the region, and the transplanted Western Europeans living in Eastern Europe, the Baltic and the Balkans. Neither genes nor discrimination are necessary to explain this situation, though some intellectuals and politicians have chosen to claim that the differences have been due to race and others have chosen to blame social injustices. Many other racial and other groups in many other parts of the world have likewise ended up with large disparities in opportunities and achievements, for reasons that range across a wide spectrum and cannot be reduced to genes or injustices. Thank you for watching this presentation to the end. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Wow. Wow. Yo. Wow. Yo. Very interesting. More education. Yeah. To take like over the I'm nation. Going to world. Now we're in world history. World history. But the, see, that's the thing. The more you know world history, the more you understand who you are. But yeah. if you understand, you only look at it from that lens. A bird's eye one, view. I then mean, it's, it looks, they can make you angry because you got a lot of puzzle pieces that ain't been filled in. And just after high school, if people don't go to college and you don't do the research on your own, then how are you going to get the information? That's how the, the majority will go along with a certain thought pattern or thought train, as, as he just said. You know, many people are going to go with the commonality of what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Especially if you're not going to do the research yourself and you just can't go and pull up a source online or any old magazine. You know, you really got to dig in and get the facts. True. Yeah, this was good. This was good. All right. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nosedive and comment down below, man. We'll see you if you want some more. Yeah. Yeah.